بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر گرلس ہاؤ آر یو ہوپ یو آر آل فائن اینڈ لرننگ فرام دیز لیکچرس ویل ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈلیور لیکچر فائیو چیپٹر الیون الیکٹروسٹیٹکس ریویو آف پریویس لیکچر دیٹ از لیکچر فور ان اور پریویس لیکچر وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ کوزز لا اینڈ اٹس ایکسپلینیشن objective after listening to this lecture you would be able to understand the uses or applications of Gauss's law as we all know in our previous lecture we discussed that Gauss's law states that the electric flux through any closed surface is 1 over <coughs> epsilon naught times the total charge and closed in it and uh, we are also familiar with the equation Uh, as I told you uh, in the previous lecture that electric flux symbolically is represented by phi as a subscript E that stands for electric flux. It is equal to Q over epsilon naught. What are the applications of Gauss's law? The first one, location of excess charge on conductor. Electric field intensity due to an infinite sheet of charge. electric field intensity between two oppositely charged parallel plates now we come to the first application that is location of excess charge on conductor what are conductors we all know conductors are those substances in which charges can move freely charges means electrons or protons Negatively charged particles or positively charged particles, mostly conductors are metals. So when we talk about conductor, definitely we talk about valence electrons, that is, negatively charged particles. So in a conductor, there are electrons and protons. Due to electrostatic equilibrium, what do you mean by electrostatic equilibrium? It means in a conductor, inside a conductor, there is no dynamic charge. Charges, the flow of charge is minimized. Why? Because electrons and protons, negatively charged particles and positively charged particles, they are attractive. towards each other results no electric field because the electric field made by electrons is equal and opposite to the electric field made by protons these two are equal in magnitude cancel the effect of each other results zero resultant field inside a conductor this gives you a state of electrostatic equilibrium The electric field intensity E is equal to zero at all points in a conductor. In the interior of a conductor, we can make an imaginary Gaussian surface S. What is a Gaussian surface? Basically, when we discuss Gauss's law, we told you that Gauss's law is applicable on closed surface and the closed surface on which we apply Gauss's law is known as Gaussian surface. As I, was, as I told you about the conductor and I told you that inside the conductor because there is no unbalanced charge, the charge is neutralized that's why the resultant field e is equal to zero so the interior of a conductor is a field free region you can see here this is the figure and uh, the negative and positive charges inside the conductor inside that is the interior of the conductor gives you zero resultant field and the excess charges where they are pulled they are pulled they are moved where on the surface of the conductor so the excess charges they reside at the surface of the conductor 
since e is equal to zero everywhere in the surface and in the Gaussian surface as the net charge inside the surface and inside that point is zero. That means there cannot be charge at any point within the conductor because that tiny point could be put anywhere in the conductor. Hence, all the charges must be on the outer surface of the conductor. All the charges, what do you mean? We are talking about the excess charges. The excess charges, they are moved, they reside where? At the surface of the conductor. You can see here in the figure, this is an imaginary closed surface that is a conductor and you can see you notice that the excess charges they are pulled they are residing at the surface of the conductor and because these are positive charges so the direction of the electric field lines are represented by these arrowheads on a conductor flat or curved all charges are repelled to the outer surface. Hence all the charge must be on the outer surface of the conductor. When conductor is hollow, hollow means inside the conductor if there is a cavity. No net charge at any point within the conductor because there is a cavity. So there is no charge which reside inside the conductor. The cavity is surrounded by a Gaussian surface S which encloses no net charge and so there is no charge on internal cavity. So we call this surface which carries no charge which doesn't carry any resultant field as a Gaussian surface. Therefore, all the charge is deposited where? On the outer of the surface of the conductor as it is clear in the given figure. Now, there is a third case. Location of excess charge on the conductor. Thirdly, we put a charge Q inside the hollow conductor and insulate it so that no charge can jump from one surface to another. Assume Gaussian surface S which encloses no net charge because there is no charge transfer between the charge and the conductor. As I told you that uh, <clears throat> if there is a cavity that is a hollow conductor, hollow conductor means no charge. So there is an insulation means the charges they can the charges they cannot move, they cannot jump from one surface to another. So we call such surface as a Gaussian surface. So you can see you notice over here uh, that uh, such inside such a cavity, such a hollow surface, we put a charge, a positive charge inside this cavity as shown in the given figure. Initially the conductor was uncharged but when charge Q is inserted then there will be a negative charge on the inside cavity in order to maintain its neutral status. So as we all know that there is a force of attraction between a positive and a negative charge. That's why when we put a positive charge Q inside the conductor then all around this region the negative charges are pulled towards this positive charge just to neutralize it. So the outer surface must have a charge equal but opposite the charge of the internal cavity or the outer surface charge is equal to that of charge Q and in this way all the positive and negative charges mostly positive and negative charges are neutralized and the remaining they are pulled towards the surface because of force of repulsion between these positive charges and the positive charge which we put inside the cavity. So what is the result? Air lines airbus A3 Eight zero flew through a storm when 500 people were on board, but none of them were injured. Why? What's the reason? 
the reason we discussed in the application of Gauss's law that inside the conductor, because the plane, the outer surface of the plane is a conductor, and inside the plane there is a field free region, so no one inside it is injured because of the electric field. As there is no electric field, no potential difference inside a metal surface, potential uh, difference means that there is no helper for the charges to move from one point to another point. So, one of the safest way to be inside a metal shell during thunderstorm. There is another example. As a consequence of Gauss's law, an apparatus placed within a metal enclosure is shielded from electric fields. Okay. Electric field intensity due to an infinite sheet of charge. Let me consider here an infinite plane sheet. You can see here in the given figure. This is uh, an infinite sheet of charge, of uniform charge distribution. What do you mean by infinite plane sheet? Infinite plane sheet means that the region, the length <coughs> and breadth of the sheet is extended. Why? Because I told you in the previous lecture that at the end the lines of force, that is electric lines of force because of fringing effect they produce, they may produce non-uniform electric field. That's why in order to avoid it here we take an infinite plane sheet of charge distribution just to introduce here a uniform and strong electric field. So you notice here that is this is an infinite sheet of uniform charge distribution and the charge distribution results a charge density and uh, symbolically it is denoted by that is sigma. Okay. Let P be the point at a distance R from the sheet and E be the electric field at a point P due to positive sheet of charges. Okay, we notice over here that this is an infinite sheet of charge distribution. And what is the direction of electric lines of force? indicated by this arrow line that is outward outward away from the inside or from the interior of the sheet okay let me consider here a point p the point p is termed as a point taken on this surface let me consider this surface as a Gaussian surface it is a close imaginary surface and this and this surface having three faces that is this face one that is the surface this face two that is again the surface and the third point may be taken at any point on the curved surface. As we all know, I told you about the formula of electric flux. Electric flux is equal to E dot A, where what is E? E is the electric field. What is A? A is the area vector. What is the direction of A? perpendicular to the surface. So when we take this imaginary closed surface which is in the form of a cylinder, when we come to this surface one then uh, we notice that this is E the direction of electric field intensity and what is the direction of area vector along the direction of E. So when we take flux at this point, that is point P, then it would be E dot delta A or E dot A, that is E A cos of theta. Similarly, when we take this space, that is surface 2, again the same are the conditions. Which one? That the direction of electric field intensity is outward and what is the direction of area vector A? 
perpendicular to surface 2 it means e and e and a they have the same direction then again they have zero angle so e dot a is equal to e a cos of theta now we come to the third point that is the point on the curve of this cylindrical surface so e is directed e is directed here e is directed how because this is a curved surface i told you that how you find the direction of electric lines of force at the curved surface tangent and what is the direction of a perpendicular to the surface so what is electric flux a this is a perpendicular to that is e that is the tangent so tangent means what is the direction of e and a perpendicular what is angle between e and a on the curved surface any surface at any point on the curved surface that is e dot a again it is equal to e a cos theta and here theta is equal to 90 degrees okay let p be the point at a, point at a distance r from the sheet and e be the electric field at a point p due to a positive sheet of charges consider gaussian surface in the form of a cylinder of cross-sectional area a perpendicular to the sheet of charge all right the direction of e is perpendicular to phase containing p and parallel to the curved surface as i told you so we want to find now the total flux for this entire cylindrical surface it would be equal to electric flux at this point that is point one electric flux for the for, for the second surface that is for the point two and three point is a point which is taken at any point on the curved surface so that is phi 3 so how to find the total flux by adding all of them okay phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3 but we notice one thing that at the surface that is the point p e dot a e a cos theta theta is 0 cos of 0 is 1 that's why here the electric flux is e a here the lactic flux is e a again so what would what would be the total electric flux for both the surfaces it would be 2 e a e a plus e a makes 2 e a okay the charge enclosed by the surface will be sigma into a okay so here uh, as previously i told you here we have introduced sigma where what is sigma sigma is the charge density charge density is equal to charge per unit area and charge per unit area means q would be equal to sigma into a okay as we all know from Gauss's law, now we apply Gauss's law on this infinite sheet of charge distribution. So the total flux would be equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the charge enclosed by the closed surface. That is, phi total is equal to total Q, capital Q stands for total charge enclosed. All right, as I told you, that surface charge density is equal to Q by A. By cross multiplication, what we get, the charge, the total charge enclosed again, that is Q is equal to sigma into A. So this is equation number one. And we are going to utilize the value of Q from here in equation number one in order to get the total flux the total flux is equal to sigma a 
over epsilon naught. So girls to remember here in equation number one we have utilized the value of Q from surface from the definition of surface charge density. So in order to find the total flux through the end phases as I told you earlier you have to add both the fluxes phi 1 plus phi 2 that is E to delta A plus E to delta a would be equal to what sigma a over epsilon naught so this makes because I told you here theta is 0 when you open the dot product that gives you e a cos theta this again gives you e a cos theta theta is 0 a cos of 0 is 1 that's why e a plus e a gives you 2EA which is equal to sigma A over epsilon naught. Alright, we get this equation and in this equation we notice one thing that A and A could be cancelled on both sides results E is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon naught. This is giving you the mathematical form of electric field intensity due to an infinite sheet of charge distribution. As I told you in my first lecture that electric field intensity is a vector quantity and in order to write down the electric field intensity in its vector form you have to write it in vector notation by putting an arrowhead and introducing here a unit vector which is normal to the sheet and directed away from it. Why? Because the sheet is a positively charged sheet. Okay, this is giving you the other application of Gauss's law. How we are applying Gauss's law in this experimental arrangement where we have to introduce, we have to use two oppositely charged parallel plates. Let me consider here two oppositely charged parallel plates. Which one? One is negatively charged plate carrying a surface charge density minus sigma. This is giving you positively charged plate having a positive surface charge density that is plus sigma. So you notice in this figure that the direction of the field would be from positive charge towards negative. In my first lecture I told you how you represent electric lines of force when there are two charges one is positive other is negative then lines of force they emerge from positive and they move towards negative. So we notice that electric lines of force these are directed from positive plate towards negative plate and it results an electric field E in a region in between the two plates. To avoid fringing field at ends plates are assumed to be infinite length. The same thing as I discussed in the previous application that uh, in the previous application we took an infinite sheet of uniform charge distribution just to introduce a strong and uniform electric field. Just in the same way, let me consider the two oppositely charged parallel plates are again of infinite length because if the lengths are finite, then at the ends, the lines of force would be fringing, means creating non-uniform electric field. In order to avoid non-uniform electric field, let me consider two uh, plates or sheets as of infinite length. The field intensity will be uniform and normal to the plates. You can see the lines of force are all equidistant. All right. And these are normal to the surface both surfaces we are talking about the positive surface and the negative surface on both surfaces these lines of force are 
perpendicular or normal. To find the electric field intensity E, let me consider a quotient surface as I told you. Whenever you want to apply Gauss's law, you have to introduce a closed surface, an imaginary closed surface and we call that surface as Gaussian surface. Let uh, You can see here in the dotted line that uh, <coughs> this is giving you a rectangular shape closed surface and uh, we call it uh, a box, an imaginary box that is a Gaussian surface having cross-sectional area A at point P between the two plates. Let me consider here a point P on this closed surface. The flux is zero through the sides of the box which are parallel to lactic field. Okay, as I told you girls, this is giving you a rectangular shaped box and in this rectangular shaped box there are four sides one two three four you can see here these two sides are parallel right and what would be the direction of area vector as I told you area vector is always perpendicular to the surface so a would be perpendicular to the surface so what is the direction between the two vectors at this length, at this segment of the surface? That is A here horizontal, E directed downward. What would be angle between E and A here? That would be zero. Uh, sorry, that would be 90 degrees. So E dot A, E A cos theta. Theta would be 90 degrees cos of 90 is equal to 0. So there would be no flux. Similarly come to the identical and parallel portion that is this one. Again the same. Same are the terms and conditions. The area vector is perpendicular to the surface. Electric field intensity is directed downward. Angle theta between them is 90. Again, cos of 90 is 0. That's why the flux is 0 through the side. Side means these two sides we are talking about. So no contribution for the lactic flux for the two sides of the closed imaginary surface. But electric field E is normal to lower surface of Gaussian box and electric flux is EA. Okay, now we come to the bottom of this imaginary surface, this one. Okay, at this point P, what is the direction of a lactic field intensity? That is downward. And what is the direction of vector A? Again, perpendicular to this surface. So it would be downward. So it means here E and area vector A having same direction. What would be angle theta? Angle theta would be zero. What is cos of zero? One. So what would be electric flux for the point P that is for this bottom of the imaginary surface? It would be equal to EA. Okay. Now, in that case, uh, one more thing I want to discuss with you, that is uh, this surface. In this surface, the, lect uh, the uh, uh, area vector is perpendicular. This would be area vector. And what is, uh, ang uh, what is the, the direction of E downward? So what is the direction, what is angle theta between E and A? 180 degrees but one thing more we have noticed that this portion electric flux at this top of the surface is not zero because of angle theta because angle theta is 180 degrees but what about the charge and close electric flux as I told you electric flux is equal to Q over epsilon naught this side of the surface is embedded where this plate that's why this region this plate is lying where inside this surface where there is no charge and close so q is equal to zero when q is equal to zero that makes electric flux is equal to zero it means for the entire gaussian surface the total electric flux has no contribution 
along these two sides and this top. The contribution for the lactic flux would be only for this point P. Okay, so in that case, now we apply Cauchy's law to find the total lactic flux. That is, again, this is the formula. That is, total charge and close over epsilon naught. That is, uh, this formula: one over epsilon naught is equal to uh, one over epsilon naught into Q. So, uh, uh, what we notice: uh, sigma e dot delta a. Sigma, as I told you earlier, stands for sign of summation. It means that there are four portions of this Gaussian surface. So, phi one plus phi two plus phi three plus phi four. But uh, only one portion of the Gaussian surface is contributing for the flux. So, uh, what happens? One, two, three, and uh, as uh, the top is not contributing, that's why, because there is no uh, charge and close, uh, that's why uh, we have not mentioned over here. And when we put uh, here E dot A, that is for point P, I'm talking about, this flux is zero for the one side, for the second side is again zero, and we get this equation. And finally, what comes E A is equal to Q over epsilon naught and eliminating for E uh, we will uh, get uh, here uh, the expression but before this again we introduce here surface charge density as I told you earlier surface charge density is equal to Q over A by cross multiplication we get here the value of Q that is sigma into A and we are going to use this value of Q in this equation number one what comes E A is equal to sigma A over epsilon naught and eliminating for E what we get we get this equation so girls this equation gives you the value of electric field intensity between two oppositely charged parallel plates so again as I told you earlier that electric field intensity is a vector quantity in order to write the expression in vector form we have to write down the vector notation that is the vector E and uh, here again we have to introduce a unit vector and the unit vector again it represents the direction of the electric field intensity. Okay, in the light of this third application we come to this physical quantity that is electric potential. Actually the electric potential at any point is equal to work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to that point, keeping it in equilibrium. Whenever you perform a work done in an electric field in bringing, in moving a charge that may be a unit positive charge from one point that point may be located at infinity to another point but keeping it in equilibrium so this amount of work done is known as electric potential if an amount of work w is required to move a charge q from one point to another then potential difference between two point is given by this equation so this work done per unit charge is giving you electric potential. So electric potential symbolically is represented by V. W is the work done and Q is the charge which is being moved from one point to another point in an electric field keeping it in equilibrium. Okay. In order to explain these two points let me come back to this figure again this is giving you two oppositely charged parallel plates plate A is a positively charged plate plate B is a negatively charged plate and uh, again the field inside the two oppositely charged parallel plates is uniform and it is strong because all the field lines are very close. They are equidistant. So, what happens if a charge is released from point A to point B in this electric field? Let V 
take that point charge as a positively charged point that is plus Q naught and it is released inside this electric field. We all know that there is a force of repulsion between these positively charges residing at plate A and this positive charge which is released inside the electric field. So when such charge is released from A to B then definitely because of force of repulsion which exists between two similar charges what will happen? This charge will move away from A where towards B and in doing so it gains kinetic energy because we all know kinetic energy is the energy due to motion and the charge plus Q naught because of the force of repulsion which exists between a plate A and the positive charge Q naught then it moves from A to B gaining kinetic energy. Let W B A be the work done by the force in carrying a positive charge Q naught from B to point A without disturbing equilibrium. Now this is giving you a normal case when Q naught is released in an electric field then definitely it has to move from A to B. But what happens if we want to move this unit positive charge Q naught from B to A it means we have to do some work against the field because what is the direction of the field A to B because the lines of force are directed from A to B and if attempts are made to move against the electric field that is B to A do remember girls A to B movement is the movement in the direction of the electric field B to A movement is a movement against the field and whenever you have to move against the field then definitely you have to perform work done and that work done is represented symbolically by this symbol WBA. So uh, what happens uh, without disturbing equilibrium if WBA is the amount of work done then this work done is stored in the form of potential energy and symbolically this potential energy is uh, denoted by delta U where delta U where U stands for potential energy and delta stands for change and what is the change potential energy will increase why it will increase because we are doing work against the field and that work is stored in the form of energy which is known as electric potential energy and uh, mathematically it is represented by equation number one that is delta U is equal to work done in moving the unit positive charge from B to A. Let me write here UA and UB where what is UA? UA is giving you the potential energy, uh, UA is giving you the energy at A, UB is giving you energy at B because we are moving the charge from B to A so what happens UA minus UB is giving you what? delta u and that is given by this relation where ua and ub represents potential energies at point a and b respectively so potential difference between two points is the work done in moving a unit positive charge from one point to another point keeping charge in equilibrium so you notice that the work done in bringing a charge from one point to another point against the field keeping it in equilibrium is known as potential difference. So what happens? The equation, the previous equation, we divide equation number one on both sides by Q naught, we get here this one. 
this relation is coming up so uh, what happens delta u over q not is equal to uh, we have to use the value of delta u as i told you earlier that delta u is equal to what beta u a minus u b so instead of writing delta u here we have written u a minus u b over q naught and uh, uh, by uh, inserting a negative uh, sign in between we get u a over q naught minus u b over q naught all right so in this way uh, this u a over q naught and u b over q naught is giving you potential symbolically represented by v the point that is a the potential at point b so we get here relation number 2 coming from the previous equation that is va minus vb is equal to delta u where what is delta u delta u is giving you potential difference so we get here equation number 2 where va and vb are electric potentials at respective points a and b so from the previous equation number 2 we have got such relations that is uh, u a could be written as equal to q not v a and u b could be written as q not v b so it means that these are all analogous equation it means change in potential energy delta u could be written as uh, in terms of potential it could be written as q not into delta v and this q not into delta v this product product of q into potential difference is equal to what is equal to work done when such amount of work is done against the field then this is equal to q not delta v and this is giving you change in potential energy where delta v is the potential difference between two points a and b potential difference is the work done per unit charge as i told you so what would be the unit joule per coulomb which is termed as volt so joule per coulomb is read as volt volt is basically giving you a unit of potential difference how you define volt one volt is the potential difference between two points in an electric field if one joule of work is done in moving one coulomb of charge from one point to another point this gives you the definition of the unit of electric potential that is volt so 1 volt is equal to what 1 joule of work when it is done by 1 coulomb of charge other multiples and sub multiples are given as 1 milli volt as we all know milli stands for 10 to the power minus 3 volt so this is giving you a relation other than volt this is a small unit 1 milli volt is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 volt similarly this is giving uh, this is giving you a big unit that is kilo 1 kilo volt and kilo stands for 10 raised to the power 3 so 1 kilo volt is equal to 10 raised to the power 3 volt this is giving you a small unit that is micro micro stands for 10 raised to the power minus 6 1 mega volt capital m stands for 10 raised to the power 6 and 1 giga volt is equal to g v capital g capital v which is equal to 10 raised to the power 9 volt so in this way beta to in uh, today's lecture we have discussed in uh, detail uh, the application of gauss's law and uh, the first case was uh, uh, the excess charge the location of excess charge on a conductor and then for a hollow object and then we have uh, introduced a unit positive charge inside the conductor inside the cavity of the conductor then we calculated the electric field intensity due to an infinite sheet of uniform charge distribution and then finally the third one was we calculated the electric field intensity between two opposite charge 
parallel players and from this application we have introduced electric potential which is uh, potential difference and uh, we have discussed it that it is the work done against the field in detail thank you so much